Yo! Video games. So, what you're kind of looking for is to, uh, on every attack, you take advantage of the attack swipe animation to add more damage on top of it, yeah. Mario RPG style. Mm -hmm. And then you're waiting for opportunities to essentially, like, topple in combination with other characters, and when that topple moment happens, you fucking unleash all your shit. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's crazy how FF16 is the same shit, but you have to <laughs> dodge stuff. Yeah. It's like the- and even FF7 Remake is the same stuff, and even it's the same thing in Ever Crisis when I played, it's the same shit. It's like, get them to this one point and then just unload on the toad, yeah. you know? Yeah, because it's all about, like, break, topple, launch, and then do do, a, do a, one of two or three different things. Yeah. Um, it's funny how I many, like, all JRPGs are doing this shit now. Like, all of them have this, like, this stagger moment, right? Where you have to, like, take advantage of this and then either save up all your stuff or use it to get to the stagger, or, like, things like, that mm -hmm. are kind of like that. Yeah. And that all started from FF13 for the most part. Like, I have a 13 kind of began that shit of, like, staggering opponents and then taking advantage. I don't remember. I mean, I'm sure it was in the game. That's the first one I, like, I remember. Like, in the late 2010s, doing something like that. It's funny how it's like every game is doing that now. And I think it's fun in... it's. I think it's probably the most fun in, like, this situation when you have so many different characters and so many different things that can add to that moment. Right. And FF16 where it's like, oh yeah, I've been saving my shit, right, for this moment. Or I perfectly timed it. I used my shit yeah. earlier. Perfectly timed it. It's all back now. Whoa! I'm gonna start launching all this fucking shit at him and just seeing, like... And it's the same thing. It's like, what's the result after it? Here's your damage numbers. It literally throws mm -hmm. your damage numbers right in the middle of the screen, here's the presentation, here's what, what you did, congratulations, you know? Like, type of shit. It's like super similar to this, you know? Yeah. Very much so. I like drop and roll. See? So, get, get to... But it's funny you're not like actively needing to like switch to the other party members like all the no, time and, this is and the stuff. Three was the first game that let you do it, because before you couldn't. You 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 controlled one character at a time. If you want to switch characters, you have to do it outside of battle. Yeah. Like change change your main. And it, it's it's funny how even. When I was playing Ever Crisis, there's some there's some cool shit that actually depends on you to pay attention. Like yeah. you have to pay attention. Like they they the, the enemies doing this, if you're not in defensive stance when they're doing this, you're just gonna get fucked up. And they have this so there there's an offensive and defensive gauge, right? So the gimmick is outside of your ATB, there's an offensive and defensive gauge, and when you stay in that gauge, you get all these buffs. But if you switch, you're able to like do more offensive shit when there when you have good opportunities, or to defend against stuff and absorb damage. But if you stay in either one, you can absorb way more damage by doing this. So if you time it, like, oh, I know they're gonna do this, I'm gonna time this perfectly. Yes. Now I'm gonna time this perfectly to, to do this stuff. And that's just not even ATV. That's just like this surface level thing they added instead of having a defend, quote unquote, from OG FF7. Because defend is gone. They put this, like, stay offensive, like, like you know, FF7 Remake, where Cloud takes his stance. It's like that, but it's for the whole game. Yeah, because what's the point of defend anymore at this point? Yeah, exactly. So the, the gimmick is that if you time your defensive stuff, all of a sudden when the enemy lays waste with this big-ass attack and it tells you, here comes the big attack. You, have spe you, you also get unique abilities in your move list now that you have to, like, take, you have to break an enemy. And this will do like so much break damage, but if you keep your offensive thing really high, your breaks do twice as much. Mm. So that you're incentivized to play like those high risk, high reward sort of moments in the gameplay. And it's just turn based. And I, I kind of liked it. Like it was sort of, at first I was like, okay, this is fun, but it's kind of dry because it was only one character. And then the tutorial ended. And it's like, no, here's, here's Barrett. Here's this guy. And they do different things. And then they get different abilities. So how does it, because I haven't seen like, whatever's, like, in-game, whatever's going on with it right now. How does it... What is available story? Like, where are you, like, in the... 
uh, I guess the greater timeline of Final Fantasy VII in general. So I don't know how much they unlocked, but in, in the first one, there was about like 16 hours worth of gameplay in the episodes. And it was comprised between a few scenarios of the start of FF7. We essentially, like, I meet Aerith, right? Go to the reactor and finish up that mission. And then that ends and it throws me into Crisis Core. Play the beginning of Crisis Core. Things are a bit more difficult. Like, it wa it's actually segmented these story parts in. And then when you beat Crisis Core, you beat, uh, you, you go do First Soldier, which is the unique story of, like, you know, Sephiroth being young and shit, right? I didn't even get that far. But there was a lot of content. And then they unlocked even more. But it is a bridge, right? It is, like, in these situations, they're, the, the train sequences and like, OG7 are all gone. Oh. It's not a one-to-one -one remake okay. at all. It's all a bridge. Interesting. Because I thought it was basically just going to try to, like, be this mobile game that just, over time, would just tell every story ever told of Final and Fantasy. And it kind of is. It is doing that, but it's not, like, all at the start. It's being, like, expanded upon as you play through. So here's the cool thing. So we unlock these dungeons and shit. And then they're like, okay, so go back to, uh, you know, the, the, the bombing run. But now here's all these new enemies and these new bosses you gotta fight. There's like a blue scorpion, right? That does like ice shit. But when you go back to that mission, you can take whoever you want from the other scenarios. So I had Zack, Cloud, and Tifa all fighting shit in there. And they had their own unique abilities and stuff and the, the gotcha weapons that got yeah. in, like the, all that shit. So I was like, this is kind of fucking cool. It, what it really turns into is Final Fantasy VII All-Stars. And that's what it boils down into. And then I was doing all this like side questing shit. I'm like, oh, I'm having kind of fun. And I'm like, oh, let's go back and do MSQ. I'm like, going to do main story shit. So there's a lot of content. Once again, it's a mobile game. So I, I see where they're going to make their money. And there's like a billion different currencies and shit on unlocking stuff. But I didn't need to just grind to beat some missions. I actually had to like use my brain and yeah. I fucking beat them. I was like, that feels good. That means I didn't just need to like grind a currency to, to level up a character or some shit. I didn't mind it. I was I was actually like, the, the combat was getting better and better the more I played. And I was kind of like fascinated. You don't get the huge material loadouts you do. Every character gets like weapon this and you have three materials or something like that. Okay. So again, I, I was kind of like inspired. I'm like, I, I went from like, let's see how good this is. Like, maybe it'll be okay too. I'm, I'm legit gonna play this. I'm is not gonna it, play it on my own time, but I'm yeah, definitely gonna play yeah. it on stream. Is it, is it strictly Android, Apple only? Well, you can play it on PC because there's now a new Google emulator mm. for like playing mobile games on PC. And apparently it works great. But Blue Stacks was what I was using, and it was crashing like crazy because it's emulation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, the presentation's really good. There's there's a, there's so many like it's got so many mobile mobilisms to it. There's just like so many things to keep track of and things yeah. that are leveling up and all this shit. But <clears throat> again, I liked it. I was kind of like, yeah, this feels like an, a fun evolution of OG FF7 gameplay without all the crazy material loadouts. To, not not that degree. I went from like, you know, maybe, maybe like, yeah, this is fun if you're an FF7 fan to being like, no, this is actually worth trying out. Like the, the story beats are, and they add things in some places. It's interesting. They take away stuff in some places and they add things in other places. Yeah, Blue Stacks was crashing, not in gameplay, but during like all the menu shit, it was crashing a lot. Yeah, they still call Aerith uh, 
Were you that slum drunk option? It's still there. That's where it's like you were then with that option where it's like running over again. I mean, it's like, wait, you were that flower girl, or wait, you were that slum drunk, and you can still call her a slum drunk. And I did. Wow, it's still there. Wow, 2023. <laughs> Same as the OG game, right? Look how much life that took. This wasn't like the most optimal way to do this, but... But... Here we go. It's kind of just like when you've completely min maxed and like gone into the menu and like just beat shit up so so hard. Yeah, the multiplier was at like 1500% yeah. or something like that. Like something ridiculous. <laughs> so there's the fun. Like, like, because like there's all this stuff you can do with. You have like the strategy man, which is like that's for chain attacks, multiplies damage ratio, um, and it's like oh, all these different things do different things. Um, so it's like okay, how do you how do you min max that stuff? Mm -hmm. You know, and then they have the accessories here, um, hang by the side or as a tyrant, blah 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 blah. Um, so for all the characters and stuff, um, and that's where like the kind of the fun is. And then there's like you can like change the order the buttons yeah the order placement of the arts and that changes their properties too no it's it's funny after like actually like playing the combat in this it it's it's crazy to me that like this game uh and even going back to xenoblade like chronicles right yeah this game presentation wise looks like an mmo yeah and gameplay wise it really feels like it as well it really feels like ff14 when you're when you're doing like Mm -hmm. abilities because in FF14 you have your what's it called chat your, your rotations bar or whatever yeah you're, you so you have your rotations of what you have to do when because things combo to the next thing combo to the next thing and then you're like this this bonuses yeah if you listen to this time this bonuses to this thing so it's very similar and and hitting your rotations is like which is why it's always fuck fucks with me because I'll come back to the game years later and the rotation has changed and I just don't remember how to play. And I'm like, whoa, I have to relearn the whole fucking game, bro. Mm. So to me, this kind of really feels like a like an MMO offline. Uh, at least FF14, because it, it takes a lot of a lot of feeling from FF14. Right. I mean, it basically does do that in in a sense, but look at the chain attacks and stuff like that, where it's like it's just you. Like you're not like relying on yeah. this other human, like like Timmy. To work with you. You know, that, and cast, that, cast the fucking heal and spell. And that was FF11. <laughs> that that was FF11. Skill chains were FF11. Mm. Where you had to properly, literally, the only way you can kill things fast in FF11 is to coordinate with the other people. You're a thief, I'm this. We can skill chain this, we can use this guy as an opener. And then you utilize all this shit, and then the, the mages see the skill chain happening, they have to time their magic to magic burst the skill chain. <laughs> and that was FF11 at the, at the highest level, right? Was skill chain and magic Everyone burst. has to use this stuff and get the right timing. And then there was crazy shit, like thieves were able to transfer enmity, like the aggro of monsters, to the tank. 
by using like these things called sneak attacks and shit like that, where if you stood behind the tank at a perfect angle, you can transfer the hate. There was so much shit like that. Transfer the hate perfectly lined up. You had to up. perfectly line up, and if you didn't, you were fucking garbage, right? If you didn't know the timing of all this stuff, you were garbage. Like, that shit was uh, SATA, yeah. Like, it was fucking wild, all the systems. And then, obviously, like, it, it was, it, it, and for example, as a tank, uh, paladins can naturally draw aggro really easily, you know? Uh, but ninjas could, could draw aggro. It was difficult for them, but they could blink tank, so they would never take damage mm -hmm. if you had good timing of your, of your blinks. So blink was just like, cast a shadow on myself, and it okay. will absorb two hits. And then another one that had a longer charge time, but it was or three hits. So you have to like time that shit. But as as a as a fucking ninja, you had, don't you don't have the natural abilities a paladin does to get the monster to look at you. So that's the challenge. Is that like when you set up in a fight, we're like, okay, we need to blink tank this motherfucker. You essentially just have to let the ninja fight it for a bit to establish hate. Is what you would call it. Ah. You need to get hate. Because all the ninja has is, like, a couple of jutsus and stuff outside of, like, using blink. And also, uh, a thief that would that would literally transfer hate to the ninja. But all that shit had to work simpatico. They had to be like, and if it didn't line up, all of a sudden the white mage has a crab that's 90 layers up her ass and it ain't leaving. <laughs> because she just cast his cure four for some reason and if she's fucking dead. <laughs> So there goes your healer. There goes your healer. She's fucking dead. Like, the next best bet is that, you know, the the, the, the thief is going to transfer hate to the ninja. Hopefully you'll line that up, you'll coordinate that, and somebody will get the healer up, like, all this fucking shit. So I have to ask, because I ask this all the time in my chat. Maybe you have an answer. My chat never did, Max. And that is, how come Pokemon can't look this good? My question is, why can't Pokemon be interesting? Why isn't like the the combat of Pokemon ever interesting? Because they is don't, it, is don't it, want to change it. It has not changed. Is it the same shit as the GB get the like the Game Boy games? Yes. Like, like the most like and here here's my issue with with Pokemon when it was when it was brand new like when it was fucking it's on a Game Boy. Yeah. Um, I, I had come from like the PlayStation era of RPGs and it seemed mad basic, like re uh, yeah. aggressively basic. Like you do this and this counters that. But this is good at this. You use sneak attack because it hurts this. Like, it is aggressively simple. And I'm like, does that ever change? It's like, you use fire against this guy because it's weak against that. Did that ever change? It's weak against poison. The only thing they did is they added a couple of, of element types because, like, psychic was too broken. Okay, because Psychic was, like, good. Yeah, Psychic okay. didn't have, like, a hard a hard enough counter. So, and, and, so they made Dark and Steel. And then my my problem with, like, the gameplay of Pokemon was that it never changed. It always got, no, like... No, it's still, like, your each Pokemon has four moves. Yes. Those moves have their own, like, HP And bar. that's it. And, yeah. And that's it. And then you just have to juggle your other Pokemon to fight. So that that was the point where it's, like, the combat is, never, is not changing in this game. I'm just leveling up and getting a move or two. Now, I'm not able to do some cool things with like the other Pokemon or fuse yeah. them or some shit to, to create some sort of chain attack or whatever, like something, or like really manage their stats and abilities in the background, none of that shit. So that's when I was just like, I am done grinding. Because all this game wants me to do is grind the right. same fucking like scratch attack against this. I was like, I cannot handle this, Magic man. Magikarp used a splash attack. I cannot. Cannot and even as like a, a thirteen year old or something like that, I was just like, I'm good. Like uh, other other games I've played that do this stuff is just I'm not. This is, this doesn't seem interesting to me at all. It doesn't do enough gameplay wise. Where it's like I'm just I've done the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, and it's not giving me new things to sort of like to do. So that's my issue with Pokemon. Regard maybe I'm like maybe the gameplay is so fucking sick, bro. Maybe there's something about the gameplay that changed over time that is goddamn godlike. Nope. And to me, it's like the McDonald's of video games. <laughs> the McDonald's. I thought that was like the most perfect analogy. It's I the ever McDonald's heard. of video games. Uh, and and it's funny because I was saying like, I feel like Creative Business Unit Three is the in and out of of game developers. Yeah. Where I'm like, this is really good. It's simple. But the fries are boy. The fries are mad basic. Yeah. <laughs> Which to me, the side quests are the fries. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's like getting now. We're like, the burger's great. Like, fucking, you know, right? Tasty burger. I'm trying to think of, like, for me, what the fuck is my my McDonald's game? 
I'm trying to think. Your McDonald's? Oh, like. What's your McDonald's game? Where you know this is like super basic bitch shit, but you love it? I was, God. It was. You know what? I, I, I would like to give Blackout more credit. Even, even I'll, I'll say Blackout specifically, yeah. not Warzone. I'm gonna give Blackout a bit more credit. I thought Blackout was legit good. I thought all the grappling hook shit and mm. getting in on people, like all that stuff was kind of was kind of like that. Um, I'm trying to think. Chad, take some, give me some recommendations. What? I, I, I'm not gonna, like, I'm it's not gonna say. the same shit every time. Yeah, like for me, like a Fall Guys is fucking McDonald's. Right, like that kind of situation. Like, oh, I just like this like piss easy shit, turn off my brain and yeah. fucking eat it, you know? Um, Rumble. PSO? PSO's unfair because it's old, right? It's it's like ancient. PSO's always easy to play. PSO is revolutionary. It's, it's revolutionary time. for its time, but it is mad basic. Yeah, it's very simple now. Um, I'm trying to think. Monster Hunter? No. No. This, this is quite you can get there eventually, I guess, if like, they just don't evolve or change anything. But even like, even Rise had a lot, had like quality of life stuff over world. Yeah, like, no, I, I, that's why like, I don't. I would not do that. I want Monster Hunter is a relatively deep fucking game. Diablo Four, there you that go. That you can always like expand upon and do some cool shit with some cool shit. Yeah, Vampire Survivors is definitely a, after a while. It's definitely a fucking McDonald's. Or it's like I'm playing this just because it's like yeah, I'm just seeing shit happen. Mm -hmm. Cool. Vampire Survivors is a good example of that. I would say I would say uh, yeah, Diablo Four might be. No, Diablo Four is good. Like it's it, it's, it's actually good. it's actually like the like, if you don't just rush the single player to, to to max out the end game, it is genuinely good. Like I'm like damn, this is fun. I'm actually enjoying getting new stuff and like going to new areas and seeing the new dank cave, yeah. right? Or seeing some new crazy monster. Or I went down to some place and something fucking murdered me out of nowhere. And I'm like, oh, that was fun. <laughs> like, that was kind of neat. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Here's a here's a real pet peeve of mine. And like Nico's even talked about it on his streams, where it's like, you know what drives me nuts in video games is like, you have this vista, right? Right view or whatever, and it's like, oh, you gotta go, let's say I gotta go to that island down there, right? There's only one way, it's that way. And you gotta do, and I gotta do all this. And mm. then this game is just like, oh, I gotta go down, cool. Now that's been, a, that's been the Xenos thing since the fucking Chronicles, right? Yes. And they just okay, whatever. Just Remember us it. fucking playing this shit like ten years ago in your video games. Yes, it's like and yeah. you're saying the exact same thing, where it's like you like, can choose whatever the fuck you want. I just just go. I hate, I hate pointless invisible walls. Like it drives me so nuts. Like it, it's a weird tick. It's not even like oh, is this is, yeah. this, is this a problem? It's like oh, it was bad game design. I'm like not even. You, you know what? Dynasty Warriors is 100% of McDonald's. 100%. Yeah. But I don't like Dynasty Warriors. Yeah. Like, that's not something that does it for me. Um, and you know what I think I realized, like, over time? I need games to fucking engage me, bro. I do. I legit need it. Like, na nowadays, if, if, if a game is not engaging me in some way with its mechanics and utilizing these things, and it's like, if it's not doing that, I, you, I'm fucking done. Like, you need to get you need to get me thinking about shit. Like, and, and having to think of where this is going to go. Yeah. And that's that's one of my issues with 16, is that I'm not being engaged by the trash mobs in this game at all. <laughs> like, there's nothing... The trash mobs aren't doing shit for me, dude. And it's not, not until, like, the, the, the big fights. Like, give me some big fucker that's got, like, a stagger meter and shit. <laughs> then I'm, I'm engaged, right? But all these other guys, like, uh, enemies that don't have stagger meters, I just want to, like, I don't even want to fight you. Well, that's, like, one of the most infamous things about Xenoblade is, um... Game, it's also true. Um, like, there's always a giant gorilla in the opening area. Yeah. That will hunt you down. Yeah. And it, it, it will kill you. Um, <laughs> and, and it'll like, because it'll aggro you. It'll hard aggro you if you get like near it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a staple of the series at this point to just be like, you have an opening area, something fucking massive will be roaming around there. You'll see it from a great distance. Yeah. And you can't beat it because it's level 80. But you know it's there. Yeah. And it's like, you come back here later. You're going to come back here and you're going to get your revenge. Okay. Oh, Elden Ring was like that. Elden Ring did that the very first end. Oh, of the yeah. <laughs> Where it's like, here's this fucking godlike bitch. Good luck. And you don't have to fight him. You don't. Is it the guy on the horse? Yeah, it's the golden horse guy. Yeah. I'm like, hey, this is great. And uh, I mean, almost everybody like tries to fight him at the start. And that, but you can come back literally like in 20 minutes and kick his ass. Yeah. Or you can just like 
try to cheese them. Observatoria? That shit's fun. That's fun being like, here's the first fucking... And dude, my first time I played Elden Ring in like the early press beta, right? They did not have those arrows that tell you to go down that hole. There was nothing. <laughs> so it was a dark chasm room that you start in. And all you see is the door in front of you, but not the go down thing. So I didn't even go down for the tutorial. I didn't even know how to switch like two hand a weapon. <laughs> and I fucking went to the golden horse guy and eventually killed him after an hour. But I was like, there's a <laughs> tutorial? What the fuck? And then later on, they added all these things that direct you down there because it was hard as fuck to see. It was and they like, found wait like, man, people are leaving the tutorial. Oh wait, people, people are people are going out in the world with having no idea what the buttons are. And I was like, I was like, damn, this game doesn't even give you a tutorial. It's fucking hard. Yeah, Tree Sentinel's fun because you just you, it's, it's a pattern recognition. Tree Sentinel also teaches you that enemies don't attack you fast; they attack you with a lot of wind up. They go, ugh. <laughs> like, somebody described, like, fighting an Elden Ring boss, where, like, you're sitting here, like, all right, I'm gonna dodge it. I'm ready to go. And they're like, ugh. And you're like, oh, here it comes, here it comes. And they're like, ugh. I'm like, here it comes, he's about to do it, he's about to do it. And the guy's like, ugh, and he's leaning into it. Okay, here it comes, he's about to do it. Ugh, and he's leaning back, right? I'm ready to dodge, right? Ugh, this has to be it. Dodge. And the guy's like, ah, and leaning back even more. And then you dodge, and he goes, <laughs> he smushes the fuck out of you. That is so, yeah, delayed in ring, right? Elden Ring is all, all of its fucking bosses are like, they're gonna wind up so goddamn hard for so long. I'm like, jeez, dude. What the fuck is with this? Why are they so... That actually happens to me a lot in 16. I'm gonna be real with you. Big, big wind-ups? Uh, well, like, like, the character winds up and then, like, they have, like, a slight... Uh, and then a beat, a beat, a yeah. Beat. And I always, I always, I always dodge early. on the beat, because it's it's almost it's almost too telegraphed at times. I actually liked when I fought the big dragon. You had this spin move, where it looked like you had to dodge at the start, but it wasn't. It was late. It was actually the tail that was hitting you, and you thought it was the head. So, I kind of thought that was cool because it was fucking me up, and I was like, dude, where is the dodge window on this? And then you have to learn, oh, the dodge window is late. And I was like, oh, okay, but once I once I got that, I wasn't really getting hit by anything else. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna run around a it just, bunch. yeah, you just, you get this, like, the initial, like, oh, that, that, okay. Yeah. You see it once or twice, and, like, you basically pick up on whatever it was, like, that. And it's just not fucking up. It's the same thing with, you know, the big, uh, uh the other big S-rank boss, the Iron Giant guy. It's fun. I mean, it is fun. Yeah, the delayed wing attack, yeah. The, the dodge window is crazy late. Big gorilla. There's always some big gorilla in an early area of the game just wandering around waiting to kill you. But actually, higher level than now, so I don't know. Well, now, I won't get any of you gone. So yeah, I don't know, it's like... I, I just feel like I don't even have a McDonald's game anymore. I need games to engage the fuck out of me, and granted, like, even some fighting games don't engage me enough. Right, right, I just, I just admit it, right, this game just isn't engaging me enough. Like, what, what happens in it isn't satisfying me to the point where other fighting games really do. And it's, it, and you either need to create something that is more satisfying and engaging or does different things, because if it's the same thing, it's just like, as, as other things, it, I, there, there needs to be other shit. Guilty Gear is your McDonald's? Like, wait, 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 which one? If you can say Guilty Gear Strive, then I can understand that based on what a lot of people have said about the game. I, I stopped playing Guilty Gear Strive at a point where I was having fun with it, so I could see myself going back and playing it at any point, you know? Damn, hard. MK11, I, I mean, argue it was like McDonald's for me. Yeah, but I stopped playing it. I stopped eating it. And then you get Street Fighter VI situation where the game is too fucking engaging. And it's like requiring a lot of you. And even, dude, here's what's crazy. Every time I jump back into SF6, I just go into rank and get my ass kicked for the first hour. It takes me literally an hour to warm up. 
in that fucking game. And not, not, and I, and no, in six. On six. And I can't warm up against people that aren't good. I have to warm up against people that are good. An six, hour to warm six up. Six definitely takes some warming up stuff. Oh my god. Like, oh, there's yeah. a lot. I haven't played that game enough, but it almost, like, it's almost frustrating to a, to a degree. Like, uh,. It's a very demanding game, but as a result, it's a very fun game to watch, and when shit works out, it's a very fun game to play. Like, I've never had a fighting game that, like, so illicitly puts on the front of the screen your game plan, and how are you going to assess your game plan with yeah. how much what, how much you have and how much they have. Because in 6, it really, like, there's a, there's a, you can make a game plan, and you're like, oh, this shit's gonna work if it all, if it all happens. And then it does, and it feels... So good. You get one of those every 10 games, but they feel fucking amazing. I think that's one of the things why like, I kind of like streaming and even playing games that are kind of harder. Because they're almost forcing you to engage with it, right? Yeah. You can't turn your brain off. Like, you have to, like... It's one of the things why I like New Threat of FF7 so much, right? It was like, man, I don't know if I can go back and play OG FF7 after this. Because it's so easy. Uh, New Threat was hard All as right, fuck, yeah. dude. And it, it, and, it, and it added so many systems on top of the existing systems that actually made sense. Like, gave characters, like, you know, actual roles. Instead of just being an every an every man kind of character, um, I really liked it. I thought I would highly recommend to play like the updated new threats to FF7 before like Rebirth comes out. It's genuinely like great turn based RPG shit, and you really got to think about it and like manage all these stats and stuff. Hmm. Like they made materia actually have detriments. Like if you put on magic materia, it is taking a huge hit to your HP. Like, you're losing a 5% HP if you put on magic material. Not like 1%, which is what the game normally does. Oh, wow. So, but, but it makes, but it, pretty rough. but it gives you stats in other places that you don't normally have. So it makes your magic actually fucking good. So you have to, like, start counterbalancing all this shit. Oh, yeah, Rashid's kind of soon, too. Fuck. Rashid, you know his new song was like it's cool. But it's, no, no, his new song's not nearly as fine. his new song is only okay. I, fine, I, I think it's actually but, one of the weaker songs in the whole game. But well, that's my point. Is like it's fine, but man, that really does not. Slap I think like it's his, relatively weak. like his old theme slaps. I think it's kind of weak. Yeah, well, honestly, I like the music in Street Fighter Six to a point. To a point. Yeah, I agree. But none of it sounds. Well, not none. That's that's not right. A lot of it doesn't sound hype as shit like it should. Yeah, I'm actually I'm actually still looking forward to the point where the game offers like a jukebox or something like that. Yeah. I'd, be, I'd be willing to pay for it. I still think they should they should be doing that in battle passes. They should be putting classic Street Fighter music in battle passes and the ability to put it on stages and shit. Yeah, they should be doing that. No, the classic songs are in the battle pass, but you can't like assign them to. You can you can use them in world tour, you know, and that's what I mean, like the ability to actually use that shit in the in the regular game. Yeah, I, again, I don't I don't want to say the music's bad in Street Fighter Six. I'm actually very happy it has a musical identity. Yeah, which five didn't have, four didn't really have either. Or was it was just mostly like more of the same old Street Fighter yeah, remixes stuff. of two, which I get it. Four was sort of like bringing. T well, Street Fighter has this weird thing for me. I felt like four was like yeah, it was like the soft reboot. It was kind of like bringing back you know Street Fighter two, and then five felt like it was that was the whole thing. Five, five was like 
it bring back all the shit you love of Street Fighter 2 and Alpha. Yeah, it's because 5 was kind of thrown together in less than a year. Yeah, and like... Felt like that, plus Street Fighter Alpha 4, in a way. Um, but yeah, like... 5 is what it is. But felt cobbled together. But... It had good... Did it, yes, 5 had good remixes, but it didn't have musical identity. Like, what is the general vibe, theme, feel of Street Fighter sure. 5? Sure. Right? Because, like, 3, you know what 3 feels like. 3 feels like underground, like hip-hop. Um, you know, 2... 2 feels like... Well, 2. 2 feels like an 80s move, like an 80s action film. Um, but, yeah, like... Uh, 6, having a musical identity is great now. Also, having a visual identity was you know, having an identity. Right. Yeah. yeah, for every song in six that's really good, there's another one that's like only okay. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah, you gotta get, uh, yeah, whatchamacallit. His anger things uh, of anger. Oh, in six? Yeah. 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 Oh, agree, and Cammy's is pretty good too, I think. Um, I just it might have been someone else's theme, I don't know. Might have been a stage yeah. theme. I just can't stand Kimberly's music when she gets her level three. I just don't like it. It's supposed to be hip hop, but it turns into some like weird kind of jazz music. Like it's a character. <laughs> yeah, that, that music should be a little different. Battle Hub is a great theme oh, yeah. for a Battle Hub. Yeah, like a lot of the, you know, non-consequential <laughs> music is actually <laughs> amazing. I love the menu music, dude. Like is that the, the menu music? I'm yeah, sure. when yeah. you go to... Oh, yeah. Yeah. The music in the lobbies and shit, yeah. and in, in the custom lobbies, like, all that shit's fucking godlike, man. I love it. Yeah. Me and Steve are going to go first to 50. No? I think he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> yeah. Well, head park back. So, uh, Miyazaki's last film came out. Yeah. Oh, wow. uh, and he doesn't want anybody to know anything about it. Not Actually, that I wasn't either. his call. It was the producer's. He came out and said, I don't know if I feel, uh, I don't know if this was a good idea. Hmm. That was his literal statement. Like, I'm a little worried now. I'm not sure this was a good idea hmm. for them to do it this way, but oh well. <laughs> But apparently it's. I mean, I remember. I know on the horrorish side. I remember hearing that it was like another like epic. Yeah. Yeah. Like that was a long time ago that he's making like another Mononoke like. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Apparently. And instead of like a personal story, which was what the wind, wind rises was. Yeah. Apparently it's like more of a like a sort of gothic horror ish, not gothic, but like um, more horror ish fantasy. Like Jeez, almost... I don't want to know anything more then. Uh, now, now I want to know less. Yeah, and I'm like, uh, I'm like, like, oh, like you know, we, we'll, we'll try to be light. I'm like, I'm not gonna read any more. Just, just tell me, like, is yeah, it I just want to go to a theater. I, I don't want to know anything about it. Because apparently, like, the people bringing it out here, are like, yeah, we're just, we're not, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just not actually gonna cool show anything. That sounds, that seems exciting. Huh. So, nice. that's all I know, and that's actually all I'm gonna basically anything that's know. whorish. I'm definitely down whorish. for whorish. I like those whor anything that's whorish. Horror whorish. Morish. Oh, yeah. Let's play this game. Man, music. Yeah, I'm really curious how much map exploration and systems, because this game has a lot of systems with its map and explorations and yeah. fighting certain enemies and all of that shit. Yeah. Um, I wonder if Square is going to be as heavy-handed with those kind of systems and rebirth, right? I'm really. I curious. think it's going to be interesting. The most interesting thing to me is going to be how does enemy aggro, like, affect on a, on a massive world map? You yes. Know? Yeah. Like, how do they balance that or or deal with that? Because we literally see them like on a hill. Like on a steep incline in the trailer with like Barrett shooting at something. Yeah. And I'm like, this is interesting because it doesn't seem like it's not loading. It definitely is not doing any loading into battle screens or whatever. Um, 
but it's definitely okay yeah you're gonna be fighting things on on uneven ground right mm -hmm. so kind of interesting um i also don't think it's really gonna be i don't think it'll be much of an issue honestly like uh like oh i don't know could they do this i'm like yeah yeah we could do it why not? Like, I mean, really, I think the only reason Seven, well, one of the reasons Seven Remake is the way it is, it's, it's Midgar, and like, it, it seemed like they didn't actually like. What it sounds like from them, it it didn't, they didn't actually get going on the game proper internally until later, after way later after the announcement, um, like you know when they took over from. CyberConnect too, so it's like it didn't actually even spend that long in development. No, no, not good. It seems like it did because of how early they announced, but comparatively, like it's in in actual reality, Seven Remake, uh, Part One took about three years. Yeah, and that's pretty good for three years. But granted, you can see where they cut corners, right? You could you could see where their like systems were getting figured out. And with all those systems being figured out, now they just have to make a long game. The other thing I think too, and then like, is we've all, I think we've both heard it where it's like, um, Overall 4 is not really great for open world environment or like large scale environments. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was made on Unreal 4, and this one's being probably made, probably being made on Unreal 5. Uh, and Unreal 5 is direct, made to directly address those issues, mm -hmm. like with the Matrix demo. So I'm like, okay, so they just were basically like, all right, we'll save it for like the next Unreal Engine when it's better for this. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, some of those decisions were probably made very consciously. It was probably, again, like you said too, like a lot of it also has to do with like getting getting your systems online. Yes. Hmm. How does how does combat work? What is the structure of the even, like? What the fuck is even the structure? Is it chapter based? Like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah, you know. And yeah, I mean, I, I think when you really look at when you look at how seven itself is structured, it's not even it's not even that difficult to imagine what they're gonna do. Yeah, uh, that's what I was saying in fucking twenty fifteen. You know, like how each game is gonna be. It was, I was just like, yeah, I mean, the first one's probably going to be kind of corridor mm -hmm. and you're going to stay in Midgar, and, you know, they probably make a full game around Midgar, and people are like, no, that's too short. I'm like, well, they can just, they can make a full game out of it. Yeah, can't think of the scope of the old game, think of the new game, and they'll probably have a big open world game for the second one, because you're obviously going to be in the open world, and then, I didn't know what they do for the last one, but I'm still pretty convinced that, you know, you're going to have a world-sprawling, access-to-everything adventure, like Kaiju Hunt. Like, that will be... Uh, that'll be part three. You know, make it just epic. Even more epic than the core shit. You know, you're fighting snakes and things, you know, in, in, in Rebirth, practically. Right. You're fighting a big snake, you're fighting a robot, like, oh man, some crazy shit. In, in part three, it's got, you're fighting a giant world-destroying monster that is, that is attacking a town. Hmm. And you have to stop it or some shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and you have to do that across the whole planet. Like, the, the game is gonna be segmented by those moments. Or this thing just, like, unearthed the goddamn city you were just in and everyone's fucking gone because it was attacked by the ultimate weapon. It's like, whoa. Like there's, everything turns epic on, on an epic scale. And I think it'll be exciting. I, I'm, I think it'll be cool to see diamond weapon. Yeah. There's one thing I was saying, uh, I was thinking of ways to improve, like, 16, so that all this, like, non-consequential dialogue that, like, permeates the game that's kind of boring and doesn't really add anything would be better, or, like, going to towns would be better. And I, I thought of something that made me motivated to play, like, literally Breath of the Wild, which was gear. Oh. And I'm like, how cool would it have been... Mm. If every single town in the game and region you went to yeah. had, like, a garb. Had yeah. like a regional garb, and you yeah. had to get the legs and the pants and all this yeah. stuff, and you had to go do things for people, and like in that town, gain your fame in that town so that people would give it to you or make it for you. So you're now, in, in, and it's not even stat based, you're incentivized to hang out in the town and do the side quests, because what are you getting from this shitty side quest? Hey, you're getting some dope looking pants, 
right? right? That will be good, maybe not for stats, but at least you can, you know, get some cool looking gear. I love that in Zelda Breath of the Wild, of like, oh, finding some new cool looking thing I can go wear here. It was about the only thing that was sort of enticing. Yeah. For me in Breath of the Wild, and unfortunately, like, I didn't even care by, like... But how much game. how much better would that be if, like, you going to each town was like, oh, I'm in a new town, that means new gear. That means, like, not just stat-increasing gear. Right. Visual gear right. that, like, makes it look like you're from, like, that town or right. something. Right, and then that's, like, the, even in, like, this game where, uh, like, it's this middle ground where it's, like, we don't have gear, we have, like, specific costume sets. Yeah. And every character you... Every class you unlock or character you meet in the game... They have their own class. Sure. And then that their clothing can be applied to other characters. Yeah, I see what you mean. So it's like, That's okay. That's good. It's something. Yeah, so it's like, okay, cool. I can kind of fashion souls it a bit if I want to. It's not like it's not like I don't get to choose pants and, and shirts and boots. Like, a decent pair of pants. It's just like, it's whole, it's whole sets. But I'm glad it's there. And you know what? It's crazy in 16. Is that you don't even have time to like get attached to a weapon of some kind. You're just on to the next weapon. Like you just you, every, every other mission, it feels like you go to the smith and make some new thing that just very minor increases damage like ten points, and it's like, well, fuck it, I'll just get rid of whatever I'm using. Yeah. And it feels it feel like the weapons you're using have like enough of a significant impact outside of just damage. Like there needs no, no, there should be different things. Like the ice weapon should add ice attack or some shit, you know. But instead, it's just a sword that has. The, the stagger meter and this and that well, is it. Well, oh God, people were there were some pretty nasty comments. Ooh. They got banned anyways. But like when we had the preview, then and I said, "There's not really a lot of RPG mechanics. There's hey. a very very basic hey. loadout. You get like your sword and like two equipable things. Then you have these rings. Yeah, they're, they're, the RPG stat management isn't really there." It's not it, there. It's, it's based on abilities. And people were like, "That's not true." Blah, 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 well, blah, Simmons, blah, don't blah. don't even don't even start like, me on well, the early preview things of me being honest with how it is and people being super fucking pissed about the frame rate in the environment and the world. Yeah. And I was telling people that it is not great. Like it is it is running at thirty most of the time, and it doesn't ever really feel like it gets sixty. They changed that in the final game. It does get better. It, it is between 30 and 60, but before it was 30 only. Well, there were very old builds we were playing. So, and yeah, but people were like, we haven't seen that stuff yet. We were playing the newer builds. It was still 30. It was 100% still 30. So a lot of people are getting on my ass like, hey, you stupid motherfuckers. Yeah. Like, how dare you say this? There's, there's, there's this other thing. I'm like, I can't tell you what is in the other things other than what I played, bro. And I'm pretty sensitive to this shit. No, the environments do not run at 60. They don't. And yeah. they they never will. <laughs> they essentially never will until the PC version. And then when you play and you play the full game too, and, and it's, it's the exact like... same fucking way. Like I don't know what to tell you, man. Like I hate. I'm I'm sorry that I was being honest with you, but that is the way it was, and that's the way it is. So they hated you for it's fandom to a fault. Yeah, they hate you for telling the truth. Yeah. And it's not like. It's not like we were saying, oh, they gave shit or whatever. No. I was like, no. Nah, I was just telling you what I was... People are, do, people are thinking I'm not good at seeing frame rates. I'm like, well, the problem is I'm very good at seeing it. So... Uh, and I could very much good. tell. Like, well, the, the, I, the motion blur was also really bad. Well, and I, I warned I people remember, about them. I, I distinctly remember looking over to you and saying, like, those are the frame rates popping up and down between 30 and 60. And then uh, you were in, like, in yeah. fighting, yeah. And you're like, yeah, in fighting, it's that. And... In, in, in like, because at the beginning it's also cutscene. So the the reason I knew it immediately in those early builds was because when you're looking around these environments and you oh, want to look cool. at stuff, the goddamn blur was insane. Like 30 FPS with motion blur in the environments was making me like, whoa, this is intense. I hope this changes because the motion blur was bad. And yeah, the motion blur came out and it made the game look bad. And I don't know if you played it since the motion blur patch. But my god, it's so much better. I did. I went back and did a bunch of hunts after the motion blur. You put motion blur on like one I'm now? I'm very pissed that they, they put that in right after I beat the it's game. It's so good. It's it's like, it, oh my god, the image quality bumps up so much. Right after I beat the game, they they, they finally patch out motion blur, and I'm like... I You don't uh, want to turn it off completely, uh, because it literally I'm turns the 30 FPS shit into a slideshow. It's yeah. really bad. And you understand why they put on motion blur. But if you leave it on a one, it's perfect. It's like, oh yeah, it's great. Don't change it from a one. 
Are you put one pip on? One pip. It's 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 a it's a slider that goes to five. Yeah. So. Yeah, Kenny. When you start, if you start playing. Yeah. Uh, but trust me, if you got oh, if, if, if if you. Oh no, no, there's no PC. There's no PC. Yeah. If yeah, you right. were if you were kind of done yeah. with Final Fantasy VII by the time that game was ramping up its ending of FF7 remake, you will be fucking cooked in this game by ten hours. Mm. It, it it is it is definitely like. Oh my god, can we just get on with it? And if you're not like really into the world, uh, you'll you'll drop out pretty hard. But like I, like what, what every, like other people are saying, it's like well, the combat keeps going. Yeah, the, the oh, problem the is is, is that you have to wait for the combat to get good again. Uh, because all the stuff that happens in between the good stuff is pretty like I'm just whacking this shit. Yeah, walk here to walk there, walk here to walk there, and whack these enemies. I don't really fight back. Jesus, is that 4.30? Yeah. Is it? Christ. Oh, goodness. It's 4.30. All right, chat. And Simmons, I'm ending your birthday. All right. Uh, ending your birthday. My ass hurts. Sounds good. I'm sitting down. Christ. Uh, all right, chat. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be jumping on Naraka oh and some more stuff later, either 16 or more Street Fighter. Uh, but we definitely got some Naraka to play. And it'll be me... And if Kenny's on too, I, yeah. I don't, I'm down to. I'll, I'll down to jump a couple of times because like I, I ended up early because like because uh, all of the, the jet lag and stuff like that. But I want I want some more. I want to want to try to find that cave and get a bunch of cannons. I want to I want to stick with like one weapon and get good at it. Yeah. I think that'll be I'm very be easy. The cannon lord. All right, guys. Thank Thanks you for all the birthday guys. messages. Happy birthday, Simmons! Appreciate it. Happy birthday, Simmons! And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys online tomorrow. We'll be playing Naraka stuff and either Street Fighter or Final Fantasy. We'll just continue it. Anyway, have a good one. Yay. Peace. Bye bye.